Welcome back, guys. Bear down. There is a lot of clarity coming for things. If you didn't see the video that Swifty and I did last night and earlier this morning, check those out. Good two-part series where we were just free talking after all the things that have happened. LSU's Pro Day, Jaden Daniels' uh, elbow. Clearly, it looks like Caleb Williams isn't just smokescreen. He is most likely the number one pick. Check that video out. It's a good basis for where we are. But along with that, I haven't done enough mock drafts with where Caleb Williams goes 1-1. There's a lot of clarity with everything that Ryan Poles has said, with what Matt Eberflus has said, how Ryan Poles said they'll break into pods and go over offensive tackles, wide receivers, defensive end, and clearly quarterback is going 1-1. I haven't done enough of those. So I wanted to give my take this morning, well, this afternoon, uh, when it releases, on what my ideal, where the Bears go from here through the remainder of the offseason to get to training camp. And I'm not going to include undrafted free agents at this point. We'll pick up guys, but I don't expect with how this roster has improved so much for us really to have anybody that's competing on the undrafted free agent spectrum. To really see through the draft, through free agency, what we've done. But I wanted to show my face for a minute because I just want to give a sincere thank you to those of you who have been following the channel, who have been following the nerdy analytical stuff that I do. As we get to the draft, I'm going to give you guys a lot more of that. I'm going to give you some looks at the guys where I really think we're going to be picking and some stuff on each of them. But I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for the support you guys have given. Thank you for where this channel has come and gone. We haven't gotten everything right, but that wasn't the point of this channel. It's not a predictive channel to try to be Nostradamus. That's not where we are. We're trying to understand, dissect, uh, figure out what the Bears are doing, figure out why they're doing what they're doing, figure out the, the direction and the optimism of what all that can bring, what this team can do, be realistic about where it can compete in 2024, 2025, and beyond, what I think about players, free agents, players that we're picking up, acquiring, signing, uh, drafting, what I think about some of them, some of their metrics, and where we go with that. So again, thank you for checking out the channel. Let's get right into it. Let's get into what my ideal offseason, the rest of this Bears offseason looks like for the Chicago Bears. All right, so I am recording this in the middle of the night. Last night, I'm hitting a flight first thing in the morning. Oh, let's go back to that first. I don't want to. I am, I am hitting a flight first thing in the morning to head to Arlington. I'm going to be there for the Cubs' first couple games. So if any breaking news happens, by the time this releases, I already preset it to release. Don't hold me accountable. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can here, guys. But here's my Thursday mock ideal scenario. I'm not going to make it long and drawn out like I do some of the mock drafts. I'm just going to give you all the meat and potatoes right here, right off the bat. So... On the far left, there's the trap trade capital pickups we've already done. Second round pick, we got Montez Sweat. Fourth round pick, we got Keenan Allen. Now, that is the steal of the offseason, guys. That really is, other than the Steelers stealing Justin Fields. But really, I think Keenan Allen, especially if we lock down an extension with him, ooh, he is, that an ex is that a steal? And then Ryan Bates in the sixth round, which is actually huge for a sixth round pick. He's going to be a quality guard center backup that um, – Really gives us way more quality depth than Jatiri Carter. I, right where we stand now, I see Jatiri, Tart, Jatiri Carter still on the team, but I don't think he'll ever see the playing field. He might not even be on the the 53-man roster that goes to the games of the 45, that, that go to the game or 48 or whatever it is. Uh, so here's the ideal of where we stand. I just think it's, it's too much happening with Caleb Williams. The hall is not happening. So 1-1 one, one, Caleb Williams. It's looking more and more likely that Romo Dunze could be there at 9. So if he's there at 9, I'm snagging Romo Dunze in a heartbeat. If he's not, we can do a little trade down. I'm not going to throw that in here because I really want Romo Dunze. This is my ideal offseason. So if he's not there, we can trade down a little bit. We can get Brian Thomas Jr. I still want to take an X receiver, a separator, a contested catch guy, speedy guy. Both those guys fit the exact mold of what I want in an X receiver to learn with Keenan Allen and DJ Moore. Give Caleb Williams someone that's a high point contested catch guy. They really can help him with the way he likes to play and adapt him to the NFL. So with Caleb, obviously, a couple stats there. You guys can check it out. 30 touchdowns, 5 interceptions last year, 90.3 PFF grade. With Rome, 1,639 yards, including the playoffs, 13 touchdowns, and including the playoffs, 75% contested catch rate. If you missed it yesterday when I said it, Jalen Waddell had 100%. And Justin Jefferson had Roughly the same amount, 75 to 80%. Romo Dunze is right up there. And those guys are instant success factors into the NFL for me. So this is a, a, a no-miss with Romo Dunze. And I freaking love the idea of having him on the team. 
All right, third round, that's where I think we go offensive tackle. Kieran Amigjabi, Dodgy, uh, the offensive tackle out of Yale, 33.08 sack hit hurry career. So as an offensive player defending, he only allows one every 33. That's highest on the Bears, but this is college, and he did play a lower level, but he had an 89.5 PFF grade. So that, to me, this is a very much a Braxton Jones types of player, but a lot better base. So he'd come in and compete with Braxton day one. Whoever doesn't win the starting job, which Braxton probably would to start the year, but Kieran could take over, that's our swing tackle. And that automatically kicks Larry Borm out the door. See you later. Shouldn't even be in the NFL. Peace. Sorry, Larry. It is what it is. So third rounder there. Now, here's my one. I think Ryan Poles always has the bug in him that he's going to try to figure something out. And with this, the, the number one pick in the fourth round is always up for trade. So this is my scenario here. This is just a little fun for it, guys, to get one extra pick and to get two quality guys later on. We're going to trade up from 122 to 101. We're going to trade with Carolina. We're going to give them 122. Next year's fourth. I know it's a lot to give up, but you've got to trade to get up that first pick in the fourth round. And if Mason Smith is still there, he is worth it. And we're going to give him one of our six next year because we have two six. But remember, we have a first, two seconds, a third. We wouldn't have a fourth now, a fifth and a sixth still. And we'd get their seventh. So we'd get a seven. So, I mean, there's it's just an idea. This is not likely to happen. It's like playing the lottery. It's probably not going to happen. But it's an idea that would work because we're overpaying them. We're coming up to 101. But it's the right value for trading up from 122 to 101. We're going to get from them 101 this year's fifth. So basically exchange for next year's fourth for the fifth. And a swap of this year's or next year's sixth for seventh. So that's what it is. So we're going to pick up a little bit of depth there this year to get one more player. We're going to get Mason Smith at 101. What I love about him is he's a tackle machine. So right there in the interior, we don't have a fourth interior offensive lineman right now. We have Andrew Billings, Gervon Dexter, and Zach Pickens. We don't have a fourth. You carry four. He doesn't have the pressure to come in, but he can rotate in with these guys, and he's not going to give up those runs through the middle. He's, he's going to be a, a giant boulder in the middle there with no one getting through, so I love it. Fifth round, we're gonna pick up that edge, and what this does is it allows us to cut um, Robinson. Space in the first name, my bad, guys. Dominique, my goodness, guys. I don't know why I have a brain fart, but Dominique Robinson, who should not be on the team, he was terrible last year, and I'm done with him. I'm done with these low-end guys that shouldn't be on the team. Braden McGregor has explosive 10-yard splits from his combine. From his pro day, to me, he was impressive. He's not, oh, I'm jumping up into the third, fourth round impressive, but he's impressive. He's got he's got to be refined, but it's a perfect guy to come in and be able to rotate in and to be able to have a depth piece until we draft a true star next year while we've got Sweat and Walker and have some of those pieces to be able to, to handle it for this year. So this is a depth piece to me, and at fifth round, Braden McGregor to me would be a steal for a depth piece there. All right, so very quickly... Right here was our needs chart that I made a couple weeks back. Starters don't have a quarterback. Filled it with our first one. Wide receiver don't have an X receiver. Filled it with our second one. Then in the middle there, you see Larry Borum, offensive tackle. These are someone that we can possibly have as a starter but could have as a rotational guy. So Larry Borum, gone. We've got Kieran Abinjabi. I'm saying his name wrong, guys. I apologize. Be able to compete with Braxton. Gives us a swing tackle. Need filled. Defensive end, Braden McGregor. Doesn't necessarily fix the issues, but gives us better depth than Dominique Robinson. And next year, we'll be able to pick up a first-round defensive end as long as this year goes well and the Bears go according to plan. Next year, mid to late round, first rounder, heck, let's say 32nd pick. This defensive end class is so deep, we can pick, pick up someone. A couple of Ohio State defensive ends. We can pick up Landon Jackson who's really impressing me. I think he'll go higher in the first, but there's options there. There's like seven or eight defensive ends that are first-round quality next year that you'll probably only see five or six of them go. So end of the first round, great place to pick one up next year. Defensive interior, push Brian Cowart back. Yes, I know we just signed him, but he was not. He was a league minimum contract. He wasn't He wasn't a, a stellar superstar type of signing. We can be able to put Mason Smith there. Tight end, uh, we can re-sign Mercedes Lewis to a league minimum contract. He does have some gas left in the tank, and he played very well in the role that he did play last year. And honestly, Cole Komet, Gerald Everett, that's really the focus. So having Mercedes Lewis on a league minimum contract, great position to have. Now center, we don't have a backup center. 
Here's where I think the Bears should go with the rest of the offseason. So we've done the upgraded salary cap. We're roughly $10.5 million after the favorable contracts that Poles has released, that they've all come out. We've seen Everett. We've seen everyone's contract now. And where they stand, we're sitting at about $10.5 million after the draft class. And on top of that, I do see us cutting Larry Borum. That saves us roughly $3 million. I see us cutting Travis Homer. That cut saves us $2 million. Or Kerry Blazingame. I think one of them is gone. With the new system we have with Shane Waldron, I don't see us carrying both of those guys. Probably Kerry Blazingame, unless they maybe Travis Homer stays for special teams. I don't know, but I see one of them going. So there's another $2 million. So we're sitting roughly after you take into account the league minimum contract that would replace them. We're, t- we're taking roughly from that $10.5 million, and you're looking roughly $13, $14 million. And Ryan Poles like to rob- likes to operate with 5 to $10 million in buffer space. Well, might do an extension, might do some different things, but what I would like to see is Connor Williams get signed mid into the year. Now, if you look up Connor Williams, his recovery, he's not in a hurry to sign a free agent contract right now. He is trying to recover, trying to focus on that, and not focusing on signing a contract because he's going to get lowballed right now if he signs a contract. You look at some of the reports that are out right now, who will sign Connor Williams in free agency. These are recent ones. Uh, there's not being mentioned a lot right now because he has clearly made a focus and it through his agent that he's focusing on his recovery. It was a pretty serious injury he had with tearing his ACL. Big guys have a hard time recovering. So before he can get a quality contract, he wants to prove that he's on the mend. Even then, Brad Spielberger of Pro Football Focus believes that he would land a three-year, $22.5 million deal. I think the longer Connor Williams uh, spaces this out and tries to get recovery under, under him and teams see that he's healed and doctors check him out, he'll still get a better contract. He was on pace to get a $56 million contract over five years, over four years, so somewhere in there, $14, 15000000 million. He's definitely was doing better than anybody, Lloyd Cushenberry, who signed a, a $14 million deal. Um, so he's right in line with, with there, but he's going to need, he's young, he's still only 26, he's going to need to sign a three-year type of prove-it type of deal where he can get healthy. I see this being exactly Ryan Pohl's type of MO. Backload that contract, give him incentive bases, base reasons to improve, outs for the team, outs for him, and... Do it for like three years, $30 million. Six and a half million this year for the five, six games, seven games, eight games, if he recovers well, coming back, 10 million next year. And if he continues to stay healthy, he'll get more, 2026, $13.5 million. Then he'll still be young enough that he can sign another contract. He'll still be good for one more little extension into his early 30s. So I think he's in great position to be able to sign with the Bears. Well, let's look at him real quick. Connor Williams, and then I added Coleman Shelton after that signing. So here's the two of them side by side. Coleman Shelton is not a scrub. Look at their rank at the far right. Last year, Connor Williams was the second-ranked center. Coleman Shelton, 17th, as opposed to the Bears, who had the 32nd-ish ranked centers. Absolutely terrible. The biggest weakness on our on our line who were having sack hit hurry rates below 20, well, Coleman Shelton is very average. Look at his rank, 17 out of 36, very average, 24.9 sack hit hurries allowed last year. So that's once out of every 25 plays he allowed a sack hit hurry. Anything over 30 is elite. So to see Connor Williams, this is a three-year average. Sorry, three years, not last year alone, 24.9, but three-year average, which benefits both these guys because they've had a decent last three years. Connor Williams, 45.1 plays between a sack hit hit, or a hurry. Only allowed one sack last year total. His pass block grade 71.7, run block grade 90.5. He's absolutely dominant. And if the Bears can sign him to a three-year deal and have him come in the end of the year, be able to have the next couple years with him, I am absolutely ecstatic. Because we have Zach Frazier right now for a top 30 visit, but he's only going to be available if we get a second round pick. So if we trade down from nine, and if the guy's there that we like at nine, I don't see us trading out of nine. I really don't. But if Romo Dunze is not there, if Joe Walt's not there, absolutely I can see one of those quarterback-hungry teams or even a defensive end-hungry team if we decide we're not going edge. One of them, like the Saints, trade up, give us 14 in their second-round pick, and we get Brian Thomas Jr. instead of Romo Dunze. I'm still very happy with that, especially if we can pick up Zach Frazier instead. But as of right now, this is what I want. I want Connor Williams to sign a free agency deal once he gets healthy after middle of free after middle of the season. 
and be able to come in and be a staple center for us that would absolutely upgrade this line. So between Connor Williams and this little mock scenario, the Bears are freaking stacked. And I absolutely think we could at least win one playoff game depending on how Caleb Williams adjusts to the NFL and how it goes. But how do you see him not with having a deeper swing tackle, having two healthy guards, hopefully Ryan Bates as a backup instead of Jatiri Carter, having Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Romo Dunze, um, Gerald Everett to go along with Cole Komet. I mean, this is really a stacked team. So this is my ideal offseason the rest of the way. Let's see how much of it happens. We've got a month till the draft, and then we've got all the lead-ups to rookie minicamps and OTAs and everything that goes from there. So let's see how much of this happens. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I really like this team. I don't think we need to do crazy trade downs. If we do one trade up with an extra pick and give a little bit away next year with Carolina, 100% I'm in favor of this. Getting Mason Smith and Braden McGregor, I like this. I like what we just acquired in the offseason. I like what Ryan Poles would have done here. It'd be awesome. Let me know what you guys think, though. Uh, enjoy interacting with you guys. So let me know. And until next time, as always, bear down.